Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I'm going to tell you my business. Mm -hmm. Now, some of y'all might think it's none of your business. But I love to brag. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to brag about. First of all, let's look at the ugly side. When I grew up, I hated myself. I was made fun of so much in school for being the big one, the fat one, the baby Huey, the whole nine yards. I got so sick of that I didn't know what to do, like some of you. And my feelings got hurt, left, and right. After a while, I didn't know what to think of myself. But you know what? Yeah. Yeah, that stuff hurt me till I was 27 years old. Well, another thing that happened to me, I felt rejected. And I felt rejected so much that I even started to reject myself. Now, you know that's bad when you reject yourself. Okay. I would look, let me tell you how bad my mindset was. I'm telling you this for a reason. Please listen. I used to stand in the schoolyard and look at my reflection in the school glass window while we were out to play. And I would look at the reflections of all the other kids, and some of those kids were, mm -mm. but I looked at myself and thought I was the ugliest kid on the schoolyard. Now, when your self-esteem is low, when you feel like you are a nobody, you are worthless, when you feel like you're nothing to look at, and you really buy into it, I don't care what anybody tells you. They could tell you how pretty your eyes are. They could tell you how cute you are. And you'd be saying to yourself, yeah, you're just saying that because you know I need a little boost because I know how ugly I am. It's like there is no convincing a person who has been hurt to the point where they believe the lies that continue to hurt them. So anyway, I was picked on, I was made fun of, I was bullied. And here's the thing, I was so full of rage, full of rage, that if a person started something with me, before I knew it, I would finish it. I, I was so angry. I literally, one time, I kept telling this one girl because they could try to make us fight. And I kept telling the girl, I don't want to fight you. I have nothing against you. And they kept egging us on. I was so full of rage, do you know? When she got a hold of my hair, I got a hold of her hair. And I started bashing her hair up against her head up against the wall, the brick school wall, in order to make her let go of mine. Now that's all I was trying to do. I wasn't even angry. But something happened. A switch went off in me. Girlfriend went ballistic. And girlfriend didn't even know I did it. I, w I went ballistic, that's what I mean. So what ended up happening, we had, um, monitors adult monitors in the schoolyard and somebody ran and told them there was a fight well as far as i knew we were at the schoolyard at the brick wall where uh, uh the monitor picked me up and pulled me off of margarita we were somewhere about 25 30 feet away from the brick wall now we were locked hand in hand. I had her hair. She had my hair. That was it. Do you know she was bent over, soaking wet with tears, holding her stomach? And I'm looking at her like, how did I get out of here? What happened? I'm telling you, this is what being picked on, rejected, hurt all the time starts to do. Uh, I, I'm standing out. And I'm wondering, wait a minute, we were way over there. How did we get over here? And then 
how did she end up crying so hard? We weren't crying when we were at the school wall. Why is she crying now? And why is she all bent over? Well, I'm looking with amazement because I'm like, and I feel like I just came out of the twilight zone. And one of the kids said, oh, you really kicked her. You kept kicking her in her stomach. To this day, I don't remember. Now, what I say, all that to say is, I grew up a hurting person, full of rage. I grew up thinking nothing of myself, no confidence. I felt empty, empty, empty. I felt dead inside. I wished I had never been born. And let me tell you, on top of that, <clears throat> okay, I had actually tried to commit suicide once over one of the ugliest men I ever dated, but we won't go there. Dum diddy dum dum. Yeah. And it was silly. But I was so full of hurt. You know, after a while, you get so full of hurt, you don't know if that one hurt you or that one hurt you or if you're hurting because of something way back then. It gets all mixed up in there. You don't know who you are. You don't understand yourself. You're just a ball of pain. Emotional pain, mental anguish, fear so and and what that does it binds you inside you're tied up in knots you don't know what to do with all of that emotion well let me tell you what happened this is the part I'm going to brag on when I was 27 I had been going to church for about maybe 8 or 9 months and I refused to go to that altar because I didn't want to play that church thing. That wasn't my scene. But, you know, I got to the point, and I don't know if some of you may feel this way. I got to the point where I got really tired of being sick and tired. I got tired of the status quo. I got tired of just existing. I got tired of the emptiness, of the turmoil that followed me everywhere I went. The emotional pain, the bitter memories, I got so tired of that. Add insult to injury, I had been raped three times, I was molested, I mean, so many things that happened that I had to swallow down swallow down and learn pain management. I wasn't managing my pain. My pain was managing me. But when I was 27, and I said a very doubtful prayer to God, I even told him, I'm not even sure you're real, and I'm not convinced Jesus is real. But I'm tired. And if you're willing to take me on those terms, that I'm willing to try you as well. And that was the day that my life began to change. Three days later, I woke up for the first time in my life feeling alive, alive and happy to be alive, fulfilled, gratified, a whole sense of purpose. That sure didn't come from me, y'all. That convinced me to stick this thing out and see where it would lead. And to this day, that is the best, the most important decision I ever made. Starting out, I'll give you a try. <laughs> Lord, forgive me for my sins. and Lord, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Okay, now I need help. 
I don't know how to do this. I mean, it was about that pitiful of a prayer. But God took me seriously. Even if, even though I wasn't sure how, how serious I really was. I just want to invite you to get to know my father. The lover of my soul. The lifter up of my head. The healer of all my emotional pain. The, the, the one that takes the sting out of those bitter memories. I can remember the ugly without feeling the pain that came with it. Only God can do that. Please, if it's not about heaven or hell for you, which it wasn't for me, ask God in your heart for the here and now. This is the most amazing part. This is where we live. And guess what? This is where he deals. We'll find out what's on the other side when we get there. But there's so much to discover right here in the land of the living. The things God will do for you will blow you away. God bless you. Say that prayer.